Do we got any eye kids in the house today? Yeah, come on, Angel. Come on up. Axel, come on. Let's do eye kids. Let's pray. Come on. Axel, you want to do praying? Oh. <laughs> come on. You can grab Axel. Let's do praying. Come on up. Yay. All right. Well, we're supposed to do our eye kids ministry right now. This is Angel. Hey. She's one of our teachers. If you're in the Denver metro area, we're gonna we have an I Kids ministry, we have a children's ministry, and we would love you to come and be a part of it. But we're gonna go ahead and say a prayer for our I Kids ministry, and then we'll roll right into our service. Dear Lord, we thank you for our I Kids ministry. We put it in your hands. We thank you for those who teach and for those who love, and for our young ones that they learn about God and about Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I kids, you are dismissed to go to your I kids class today. All right. Thank y'all so much. Are you coming? Wonderful. It's all right. So we'll get into our message here today. Thank you for joining us here at the Inspired Church. Our Inspired Church family online who is joining us today. Oh, Angel, come up this way real quick. Let everybody say say hi to Axel. Stand and wave. Say hello. Say hi. You want to say a quick prayer today as you give our tithe to Jesus? You want to say pray? No. Oh, no? Okay. All right, go ahead and, and give our money to God, all right? All right. <laughs> We're also in the middle of tithes here. I know we came on a little early today. Usually, you just see me roll right into the message, but I... Wanted to give you a little peek as to what we do here at the Inspired Church. And praise God. If you're in the Denver Metro area, please come be a part of this church. Please come visit. Come say hello to myself, Kim, our wonderful team of people, and Axel. We would love to have you here. We would love to shake your hand. We would love to hug your neck and welcome you to be a part of the Inspired Church family. And our Inspired Church family online, I love you so much. You're amazing. Um, just keep watching, keep sharing these messages, keep sending your prayer requests. I'm so happy to have you as a part of my life. Sometimes I need a little peace and I need a little comfort and I need a little strength. Sometimes as good as life may be at times, it's good for us to recognize and to see that God hears us. It's good to see and it's good to recognize that that my prayers are being answered. Because we can live in a cold place, you know. It don't matter how many people you have around you. Sometimes it's cold inside and we all have our own fears and worries. And stresses and all that different stuff that goes on. My message is entitled, My Strength, My Shield. We're going to be looking at a passage in Psalms. Psalms 28, verse 1 through 9. And it's a passage where, you know, it, it's, it, it's kind of talking about the processes that we need to go through in our lives when, when stuff ain't exactly right and, and things are wrong. And then somehow, some way, our minds clear up and we're able to see the reality is that our God does love us, that our God is active in our life. So I want to share this passage with you today. And I pray that it lifts you up as it did me this week, thinking about it and writing down notes and, and, and studying and, and just contemplating the word. Because it did. It, it lifted me up a little bit this week. It was encouraging. So I pray you are encouraged today. Because, you know, sometimes we feel weak and alone. And we need a little strength. And we need some comfort. Psalms 28, 1 through 9. I'm going to read the whole passage because I just love the way that it flows. And then I'll share with you what God lit on my heart. To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me. Lest if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplication when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward you, your holy sanctuary. Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil in their hearts. 
Give them according to their deeds and according to their wickedness of the endeavors and according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve. Because they do not regard the works of the Lord nor operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he heard my voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving grace. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. Here we have a situation where we're crying out to God. And I think we've all been there. We all do that on occasion or often. And it says, to you, I will cry, O Lord, my rock. You know, sometimes as much as we have a relationship with God or how strong our faith is. Sometimes our tears fall and they fall on the rock and they fall on our foundation. They fall on our sovereign God because he's built us up, I pray, to a level where we're a little stable and we have some foundation under us. But still the, still the tears flow. Because life is rough and it don't always go the way we wish it would or, or how we expect it to be and we may not achieve the things that we dreamed of. And so here David is crying out. He says, to you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me. Lest if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down into the pit. You see, our mindset needs to be Our mindset needs to be that once we have Christ in our life and we see the new way we can live and we can do that, our desire should be to not go back. David is saying, Lord, hear me. See me. See what's going on because I don't want to go back into the pit. I don't want to go back. I don't want to keep sliding and sliding. You see, what, what David is hoping for, what, what maybe he's seeing in his eyes is a lack of intervention by God. Have you ever felt that in your walk with Christ? Like, okay, God, you see the situations that I'm in. You see the stuff going around me, and I'm not seeing your work. I'm not feeling it. These things I've been praying for aren't being answered. At least they're not the way that I want them to be. To you I will cry, O oh Lord, my rock. Do not be silent, lest if you are silent to me, that I become like those who go down to the pit. Verse 2, hear my voice of my supplication when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward you, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Again, hear my voice. Have you ever, especially as a child, uh, I've noticed that Axel wants attention. And he'll call out for mom or dad. And if we don't, put our phones down immediately. <laughs> or whatever it is. Or stop watching the TV or, or pay attention to him in the back seat. He just goes, mom, 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 dad, dad, dad. And he goes on, he goes on, he goes on. He needs attention. You ever did that with your father? Say, Dad, Dad, Mom, Dad, 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 Father, hello, 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 down here. It's me, it's me, it's me. Hear my voice and my supplication when I cry to you, when I lift my hands toward your holy sanctuary. You see, sometimes in our lives, we need that holy place. Maybe it's the inspired church here today. Maybe it's wherever you are right now as you're watching this video. 
Perhaps you're on a bus, maybe you're at home, maybe you're at work and you got your earbuds in and you're hearing this word. And for about a moment, you're in the sanctuary. You're in a holy place. You see, it doesn't have to be a physical location. It has to be a spiritual location. Amen. You can have church anywhere. You can have a moment with God while you're driving your car. You can have a moment with God while you're drinking your tea or your coffee. You can have a moment with God right in the middle of Starbucks. But the important thing is that you're lifting up your hands, that you're looking for that moment, that you're looking for that sanctuary, that, that you're looking for that holy time. Why? Because the passage continues on and it goes through verse 3 and 5 and it says, Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but there's evil in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to their wickedness of their endeavors and give them according to the work of their hands. Render them what they deserve. That's tough. <laughs> that, 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 that's some serious words right there. And it says, because they do not regard the works of the Lord nor operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. You see, David is thinking here. As I did this week, as I was running this passage through my spirit, and that's kind of how God deals with me in these messages, is I, 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 He makes me stew on it and think about it. And He's saying, Do not take me away with the wicked. Lord, I don't want to go back, I want to move forward. I don't even want to stand still. I want to keep moving in some direction that 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 that, that is moving forward, forward somehow, some way. You know, I, I I want to keep momentum in my life. I don't want to slip back in the way of the wicked. Right. But the workers of iniquity, it says in verse four, it says, "Give them according to their deeds, and according to their weaknesses and their endeavors." And give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve. What came to me during this passage was according, according, according. You know, sometimes we have to repeat ourselves to be heard. I find myself repeating myself to act quite often. <laughs> I'm sure my parents repeated themselves to me over and over and over again. Our father is repeating himself to us today and saying, you will be given according to your deeds, according to the way you think, according to the way you speak, according to the way you act, according to the way you love, according to the way you give. We sometimes look at God and we say, where are you? And I have a feeling in my heart, sometimes God looks at me and says, where are you? Have you not seen your actions, Joel, this week? The way you act, the way you think, the way you speak. We put so much pressure on God to provide for our every need. But we don't change the way we act and the way that we behave. Right. And, we act and we don't see God's movement. But right. like God is saying here, what the Word of God is saying. Mm -hmm. Is that according to the way we behave. Right. According to the way we act. Now our God is full of grace and mercy for us as sinners. Sometimes, I gotta say, I think we hinder the blessings of God we do. more than we could ever imagine. That's right. And then we blame God when our prayers aren't answered the way we want them to be. That's true. 
It hurts my soul to say that. Because I want everything that God has, but the weaknesses of Joel, the weaknesses of man and woman, the sin within us. And David is recognizing this. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we have to recognize this in our life. We have to see. And we wonder, why is the world so terrible? Because according to the acts of man, This planet is in flames because of the way we act. Yep. Not because God has it in for us, but because of the sin of our lives. Sorry, I got off on a little something there. Just Spirit. firing me up here. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, as messed up as we are, as sin-driven and nature, and urge-driven and emotion-driven and all those things that drive us and you know, greed-driven and whatever it may be in our human physical lives, in David's life, in this passage, A shift occurred from pretension to thanksgiving. From asking God for help, from begging Him to hear, to blessed is the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, because He has heard my voice for my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in Him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise Him. You see, we have to see the bad side of our lives. We have to recognize the sin. We have to recognize the fear and the loss of where we live and understand that some of this stuff is beyond our control. But we also have to understand. But we also have to see and feel and recognize the divine power of God. And the fact that he knows our voice. That he knows our supplication. That he knows. It says, blessed is the Lord. Because he has heard the voice of my supplications. God knows my voice. He knows when I'm just complaining. <laughs> he knows when I'm really hurt, though, too. He knows that sometimes when I don't talk to him enough, I still love him. He knows that when you don't spend as much time as you would like to with him, that you're still there and you still care. Through all David's crying in this passage and crying out in David's heart, he knew that God hears him. But sometimes as human beings, we just got to go through the process uh, of crying out and saying, woe is me, look what's going on around me. All of this bad stuff is going on. I don't want to slide back. I want to move forward. And then we say, blessed is the Lord. Because he has heard my voice and my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I'm weak. Joel, blessed, is weak. You may be weak too. And sometimes I need protection. I need a covering over my mind, over my body, over my spirit, over my soul. I need a shield. This passage says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Hallelujah. Oh. Have you ever come to that point in your life 
over a situation and you truly put it into the hands of God and you left it there and you still have it there. Now the answer, the prayer, whatever may not have even come to flourishing or whatever, but it's no longer a burden on your soul, on your heart. That, that spoke to me that today. Yeah. My heart trusted him and I am helped. You see, sometimes we just got to put that situation out of our grasp. We just have to let it go. And then I, I know it's hard and we keep reaching and we keep pulling it back and, and we keep grabbing at it. But when that day comes where we can fully let it go, therefore my heart greatly rejoices. Hallelujah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there is hope. There is peace, there is love, there is grace, there is mercy that is beyond our imagination, even in this crazy, mixed up, turned upside down world. Verse 8 and 9 says, The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people, bless your inheritance, shepherd them also, and bear them up favor. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God is in the saving business. He's in the saving business. It's not God's fault that we're sinners. It's not God's fault that we make dumb decisions. That we choose stuff we can feel over our heavenly gifts. That we walk straight past the authority given to him, us. That we don't believe in spiritual gifts or this and that. That we don't walk in the power of the Holy Spirit that God has given us. There are so many things I could list and list and list that us human beings cast aside. Maybe out of fear or ignorance or whatever it may be, or lack of knowledge. God has so much for us. But every day God's there and he's loving and he's caring. It says the Lord is their strength and he is the saving refuge of his anointed Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. See, ladies and gentlemen, God is in the saving business of you. God is in the business of saving me. God is in the business of saving the guy on the street corner. God is in the business of saving the lady up the street. God is in the business of saving the homeless on the street. God is in the business of saving the big guy up in the penthouse, the man and the woman. See, God is in the saving business. He is our strength and he is our shield. He is our comfort beyond what we can understand and what we can comprehend. Hey, Bill, will you come up here to run this camera for a moment? So ladies and gentlemen, I just got to say to you today that if you need strength, if you need strength, if you need protection, if you need shielding, see what is going on around you. Amen. Open your eyes to, you got to open your eyes to the bad and see what's going on. But you also need to open your eyes to the reality that God has saved you. God has comforted you. God has opened doors. God has provided strength and peace. God does know your voice. So 
So my prayer, my prayer for you today, as your tears fall upon the rock, your rock, as you need your comfort and you need your strength and you may feel weak and alone, Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of your supplication. The Lord is your strength and your shield. You, your heart trusted in him and you were helped. Therefore, your heart greatly rejoices and with that you will sing praises to him. You see, sometimes you got to put yourself into the word of God. Sometimes you got to slide yourself in there and make it real to you. Ladies and gentlemen, God hears your voice and is active and working in your life today. Dear Lord, I come before you today and I thank you, God, that you hear us, that you understand what we're going through and all the stuff that is happening in our lives. And Lord, even when we see all the things that are going on around us, we don't quite understand the hurt and the pain and all the stuff that's happening. Oh, that we can know that you're still there, that we can know that you're with us, that you know that you're walking with us, and Lord, that you're comforting us, and that you're guiding us, and you're protecting us, and, and you are in the saving Joel business. You are in the saving, put your name here, business, Lord. And so for that, we give you praise today. And someone may not know God as their Lord and Savior, and you feel the desire today to just say yes to him. Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I place my hands in yours. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for letting me share with you today.